Well, it's being called the largest earthquake exercise ever attempted in the Pacific Northwest. More than 6,000 emergency planners in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and right here in B.C. will participate. It's a test to see how well we would respond to the big one. Joining me to discuss the logistics of this massive exercise is John Clegg from the Department of Earth Sciences at SFU. Thank you for joining us. The family of Kay Carter says federal legislation tabled on assisted dying does not do enough to address the needs of Canadians who are suffering. Joining us now for more on this is Price Carter, the son of Kay Carter. Price, your mother was at the heart of this Supreme Court of Canada ruling. You were being quite candid about your family's disappointment in this bill. What do you think is wrong with it? Three people are safe and sound a day and a half after their plane went missing on what should have been a routine flight between Pitt Meadows and Pemberton. A former Vancouver firefighter has filed a human rights complaint alleging racism and harassment. As Catherine Urquhart reports, Luis Gonzalez claims he was singled out for his ethnicity and subjected to racial slurs and mistreatment. Fundamentally, women and men think differently. That's just our DNA. So what sorts of policies could we see Hillary Clinton introduce, specifically to increase women's participation in politics and the issues, but also policies that will target the quality of life of women and children that perhaps we haven't seen from her male counterparts in years past. Police in the Tri-Cities are investigating a fatal collision along train tracks in Coquitlam. A pedestrian was struck and killed just before 4 yesterday afternoon. The incident forced the closure of Westwood Street and Davies Avenue while investigators collected evidence. RCMP are now looking into what happened just before the crash. It's been so very warm for so long, and we're going to see a tiny bit of a reprieve tomorrow, right back towards our seasonal normals of about 19 degrees, so it will feel great. The unstable air mass starts to shift to the south tomorrow. That allows this very weak ridge of high pressure to build in. I showed you earlier, of course. We'll dry up a little bit tomorrow with some sunny breaks. And along this Arctic front, we're still seeing some snowfall. That moisture hitting that cold Arctic air has created some snowfall warnings. About 5 to 10 centimeters has fallen already in the piece. We're going to see an additional 2 to 4, especially in the North BC Peace River region before that activity tapers off. I don't know if you can hear the somewhat eerie howl to the wind lead behind me. I'll just get the camera operator to show you what's happening just behind me with the leaves, or pardon me, with the trees and the flags. It's not raining precipitation, it's raining leaves down here. The wind is absolutely wicked. Showers across the region like I showed you earlier and certainly up into the uh, Caribou region and across the north. And then here come the thunderstorms into the afternoon for the Caribou East down into the Columbia and the Kootenai region. Parts of the Okanagan I believe as well. Certainly the central and north Okanagan. And right into your evening those conditions could persist before that low really pushes off. Look what happens into the BC Peace River region where we so desperately need that moisture. We are looking at some pretty intense downpours uh, just to the south of Fort St. John's. What we see when a front passes over us is a clash between the air masses. So we've got warm air and cold air that's basically bullying each other out. And as a result, we're getting this incredible uplift, which is why we have so many dramatic clouds in the sky, very dark, carrying a lot of moisture that's come in off the Pacific Ocean. And again, this weather system originated from the tropics. So it's got that tropical, warm, uh, very moist component to it. And that's why we're seeing the heavy rainfall. We're getting a little bit of a break here until the next front passes over us. But the winds are going to continue to be very active with that southerly component to them. So it is kind of warm out here. I'm looking ahead to the long weekend as well, and you'll have to stay with us to the end of the show because I'm going to show you the seven-day forecast. Afternoon breaks, a dry morning, but a few showers, and then we'll stay wet right through Friday. We'll see if I'm as wise in making the seven-day forecast as this guy is. The weather window tonight. Take a look at this. Now, Chris and Sophie, I have to give Sophie partial credit. She helped me choose it. I like the owl. Yeah. I like Very it. nice. Beautiful. Ah. Uh, William says he snapped this in one of the hot spots in Chilliwack to see the barred owl. So if you have a, a photo for us, we'd love to see it. Weather window at globaltv.com. There you go. In 2015, my life would be forever linked to a mountain halfway across the world for the sole purpose of supporting BC Children's Hospital. Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania is the highest peak on the African continent. And it was an honor when the not-for-profit group Summits of Hope invited me to climb it with them. The journey started by meeting some of the patients at BC Children's Hospital. They were our inspiration, and I felt an immediate sense of responsibility to make it to the summit. Some of those children signed a flag that we would carry with us, along with prayer flags. In early October, we arrived at the foot of Kilimanjaro and began our trek with the summit looming at over 19,000 feet. We moved slowly but always as a team. So it's day two of hiking. We left camp about two hours ago. The day's amazing. It's an absolutely glorious day. Clear and sunny. 
And there's the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro behind me. That's where we're gonna go. There were challenging times during the climb when I had to remind myself to focus on my breathing, putting one foot in front of the other. Feeling like we're not getting very far, but in fact, we will be inching closer and closer to that, which you can't see because it's shrouded in cloud right now, but that is the peak. After four days, we started the push to the summit, beginning with a steep nine-hour climb up the northeastern face of Kilimanjaro. These days were the toughest. The air was thin, breathing was difficult, and every movement was exhausting. The final leg began in the dark. As we went higher, the sun began to rise. It was breathtaking. When we finally reached the summit, I felt humbled, proud, and tired. We pulled out our prayer flags and flew them beside the flag holding the names of kids at BC Children's Hospital. Our journey was then complete, and it was a moment I will never forget. The year was 1952. A small outpost was established in northern BC following the discovery of the highest quality ore deposits in the world. People flocked to the area, and for four decades the mining business boomed. But in 1992, Operations came to an abrupt halt. Everyone was forced to flee and the town was reduced to rubble. Today, one building still stands tall, keeping vigil to a town long since forgotten, the ghost town of Cassie, RBC. Here in the heart of Winnipeg, on the banks of the Assiniboine River, sits this majestic architectural accomplishment, the Manitoba Legislature. But to truly appreciate the marvel that is Canada's most recognizable parliament building, and to really understand the genius that went into its creation, you need to go inside, where a story the likes of Robert Langdon and Indiana Jones resides, and where clues, hidden in plain view for almost 100 years, reveal a series of mystical codes, secret messages, and hidden symbols, unveiled that truth is stranger than fiction. He calls this show a blockbuster, not only because it's the art of Norman Rockwell, but because the pieces are recognizable, relatable, and timeless. Is there anything that's off limits in your show? Uh, no. Uh, running across the stage naked is off limits. Come on! <laughs> no, that isn't even off limits. Uh, that, that could be fun. Would you say you're a bit fearless now, standing up in front of that audience? No, filled with fear. Good Lord, what are they going to think? Are they going to react? They are the world's largest land carnivore and a worldwide symbol of the barren and often unforgiving North. But global climate change, shrinking polar ice caps and disappearing sea ice has also made them a sad symbol of the changing face of the Arctic ecosystem. Spring into wine season at the Okanagan Valley Wine Festival. From farm to table dinners and picnics in beautiful settings to cooking classes and hands-on seminars, you can taste for yourself why Okanagan wines are some of the best in the world. Join the fight and support Canadians living with cancer. April is Daffodil Month, a symbol of strength and courage in those battling the disease. You can purchase a pin and show them that they're not alone. From Rocky Point Park for RBC, I'm Kate Kadozik.